back to my channel. My name is Joni Young and if you're new here I'm an acrylic artist and instructor and I'm showing you weekly tutorials how to use acrylic paint. Today specifically this is what we're working on. This is really really fun and we're going to be using a lot of different colors. So larger canvas today for me but you can use any size canvas that you want. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started on this painting. I can't wait to show you guys exactly how to paint this and I'm looking forward to seeing your versions up on the Facebook group. Okay guys, so to get started on this painting, we're gonna be using a larger canvas today. So what I wanna do first is just get the canvas a little bit wet. So I'm just gonna take a big brush and I'm just simply gonna go up and down with my brush and get this canvas nice and wet so that it takes the paint a lot easier. And we just want to start building up the background. Now the background is going to be out of focus. Uh, our lady in the front is going to be more in focus and we're going to have her looking out towards some waterfalls and some trees and a very inviting beautiful fantasy themed forest in the distance. Now the two colors that we're going to start off with are Luminous Yellow by Holbein and a Light Blue Violet by Lip Text Basics Acrylics. Check out the list below the video. I'll have a full list of all the colors and brushes we're using today for this painting. So I'm going to start off with my number 50 filbert brush. And this is just the largest brush I happen to have right now. Um, you can use any large brush that you feel comfortable with using. And I'm going to begin with my beautiful warm yellow. And I want this to really be what's drawing her towards. So this is going to be a focal point here. And this is going to be our main source of light. So I'm just creating kind of little crisscrosses here, kind of dancing around with my brush, just blending that out. And then without washing my brush off, I'm going to take a bit of this blue violet, mix that together, and we're going to get sort of a, a grayish earthy green color. And I'm just going to apply the paint and my brush strokes in short little flicks like this towards the center and the ground. I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet after I apply the next little bit of this and that will help the colors blend a little bit more together and look a little bit more out of focus. Now the next color I'm going to be using is this light olive green by Liquitex Basics Acrylic. I'll also be using some scarlet red. And I'm going to continue using the same brush. And I'm going to get it wet again. And I'm going to take both of these colors. And I'm just going to start pulling up and down. And all I'm doing here is just creating uh, some color in the background. I'm gonna pick up some of this light blue violet, hold that in. And this way, Mixing in with that red, I'm going to get some violet shades as well. It's important to note that you're going to use a lot of paint when you're working on a large canvas, so be prepared. And because it's just the background, you really don't have to use those expensive heavy body paints. You can get away with just using the cheaper craft, uh, more fluid and loose paints. I always like to play up on my reds in my paintings that I know I'm going to be using a lot of green in. Um, that way I know that I've got some complementary colors going on. So uh, that's important to think about using complementary colors in a painting, especially if you don't really know what colors to choose. Get a color wheel and let that help you, help guide you with adding colors. Another color that I'm going to be using is my Prism Violet. 
And you can use any purple that you have or that you'd like to use. Again, I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. We'll start working out some of this paint here. And I haven't washed my brush out. I've got all hints of all those colors. I haven't worked on a big, big canvas like this in a really long time. I gotta say, this is a lot of fun. There's something very freeing about working on a big canvas and having all that space to blend the paint across. It's really kind of therapeutic and I enjoy it. Okay, I just reloaded my purple. So I'm going to apply more purple in this area. And that's also going to look really nice with any green that I start to come in with. And see how patchy this looks? This is normal. This is how you want it to look right now. This is how we get all those other colors in between. And we build it up one layer at a time. We're adding just a little bit up here. And I'll use a little bit more of that purple and red that I've got left here on my palette. neon luminous yellow cool so I'm gonna take both of these colors and make a beautiful shade of phthalo or emerald green here and the paint underneath and all around here is still wet and this is nice because I can I can make different tones and shades by applying wet paint on wet paint so I'm going to start working on the first very rough and messy layers of the foliage. And as you can see, it's starting to mix in with those deep purples and reds. And we're going to get some really gorgeous and interesting and exciting colors, light and shadow starting to happen. I'm even going to layer over top just a little bit here where that light's coming in. And then a little soft pulling, barely touching the canvas. And I, this is something I haven't done in a long time. You guys miss this. You're always asking me how I, how come I don't do these drips anymore? So here you go, guys. A little bit of water on my brush with the rest of the paint, the remainder of the paint in my brush. I'm just going to push off the frame of the canvas and let those drips flow. Maybe or make sure that you have something to uh, catch the drips. Maybe have a drop sheet down below. All right, for the next two colors, I'm back over to the olive green, light olive green, and I'm throwing in some yellow ochre at this time. So I'm gonna mix the two together. I'll get more of an earthy green color. The next brush I'm gonna be using is a number 10 colorantic stipple brush. Um, you can use any stipple brush that you have, any mop brush. If you don't have one of either of those, then you can also use a fan brush. And without getting this brush wet, I'm just going to take a little bit of each, just like this. We're just going to tap. And we're going to start over top of part of that blue. And because the paint is still wet underneath, we're gonna get multi-tones going on. It's gonna look so natural. It's gonna look like you spent hours and hours, if not days, applying all of these. 
So remember this area is in the distance, right? So it's going to start, we're going to have it looking really dramatic and drawing our eyes in and it's going to look uh, more subdued and mysterious and really pull us in. Now we can go over the top of where we started those drips from. I'm going to keep applying a little bit of this yellow ochre here. Now this color also looks quite beautiful with the beautiful indigos and purples that we've got. And then I'm going to do a light little, without hardly any pressure at all, make some of this a little bit blurry by barely touching the canvas and pulling and sweeping. even over some of those drips. Now because I picked up um, the darker colors that are still wet under there, um, I'm creating some more colors as I'm traveling over here with my brush. Now what I can do is go into my purple, phthalo blue, as well as these colors all the colors really, and I can create some really dark, beautiful, rich tones without having to use black. I still may use black. I probably will for her hair, especially, um, which really is gonna be right around this area. So I don't need to do too, too much foliage or background there. So I'm gonna come in down here and start adding some foliage, little taps. I love using a stipple or a mop brush. I really like the purple that we've got going on here. So I don't wanna hide that. I don't wanna cover that up too much. But we need to have a little bit more going on on this side as well. So I'll continue over here and we'll add a little bit of this green. Now, once I add the lady in, in this area here, uh, I'll know how much more of the green I need to add and foliage. But for now, I can just sort of add little bits and patches here and there, kind of blocking in color. You can create any kind of foliage you want. You can make it look like there's some sweeping or weeping willow types of branches and leaves. It's fun to change it up too in a painting, so don't use the same technique or necessarily have the same types of leaves and trees throughout your painting or your landscape. And it, it helps to kind of set yourself in, pretend that you're um, in that painting, set yourself in the landscape, imagine, envision what you'd like to see around you. Would you want every single leaf to be the same color or would you want to be in a place where there's lots to explore and there's uh, something different around the corner and lots of different types of foliage. So I'm just been picking up here the pushing and getting a little bit of that yellow ochre, tiny bit of that olive green on the tip of my brush and just doing little taps here and there. I call it a little tap dance. And then every so often a little pull and sweep to break up all those taps and create a little bit of that blurriness that kind of helps to create um, a mood in a painting and some distance out of focus. You need some things to be out of focus so that you have not everything competing. It's too much for your eyes to try and focus on every single part of uh, the picture. So you need to have some blurry parts and some um, parts of your painting that are more in detail, if that makes sense. So I'll wash that brush out 
and I'm going to start adding some branches. Now I've got a long liner brush here. You can use any liner brush you want. If you don't have one, you can also use a round brush. And I'm just gonna see if I can use what I've already got here on my palette. I know I've got some of that red in there, a little bit of purple. So this is quite dark and I can use this for some little branches. Now what you wanna do, the trick with a liner brush is to not use a lot of pressure and kind of just pull. I like to pull, twist and roll. So I'm doing this. I've got the brush in between my fingers and I'm rolling it against my knuckle like that. I'm twisting it while I'm traveling with it. And the reason why I do that is so that I'm not trying so hard to make it look like a branch. It's naturally flowing creating some thicker areas and some smaller areas. Uh, the idea is to make it look as natural as possible. Kind of let go and be okay with a little kind of a whoops. I didn't mean to do that, but so if you do something that kind of loops down like that and that's not really the type of branch that you wanted, kind of just, maybe it's a little vine, right? You can add a few more of those and just pull and sweep with your brush. A little bit of water on there, loosen that up. And there are lots of different um, lengths of uh, liner brushes that you can use. So if you're not comfortable with a long one like this, this one comes in handy for filming because I can kind of stand away and not worry about, <laughs> at least I don't think my head's in the way for this or my hand too much. Um, so long handle, long liner brush, I use specifically just for filming purposes. Um, they, they are nice if you're working on tall bits of grass as well. But yeah, if you want a little bit more control, you can, you can use those shorter liner brushes. Okay, so I am going to add uh, some tall grass here. I'll show you guys that while I've got this brush and I'm going to use water and both of the olive green and the yellow ochre. I'm going to twist and pull so I have a nice tight end to my brush and then just lots of little flicks. And if I don't like any of this, I can just cover it right up. But I want to show you guys how you get that effect. So this is in the foreground. That's why I'm making this tall grass, right? equal amounts of water, if not more water than paint. And I'm kind of going in a half circle as I'm doing it. That creates some movement rather than straight up and down grass. Uh, it's nice to capture some movement. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, a breeze blowing. And I'll come in with a little bit of the darker color now. And we'll add that to kind of just blend it in. Now I'm not totally sure how much I'm going to add. Like I said, I really do like this purple that I've got here. I know I want to have some waterfalls. So I can start working on that as well. Because I want to work on this background before I add Our Lady. And I will be adding uh, a mist, a dry brush of like an ivory or off-white um, to really create more of a mood and, and have it kind of foggy and misty looking and set it even more in the distance. Before I do that, though, of course, I'm going to show you guys how to paint a waterfall. And I'm going to be using a flat brush for this to start. And I don't want to use one that's too stiff. So the ones that are 
like to use are synthetic. Uh, I've got this flat one right here. This is a number 11. Don't know if you guys can see that. Sorry, I don't know the make of these brushes. I just got a big set of them on Amazon. They don't have a name. If they did, it's gone because the paint is kind of flaking off here. Um, but you can use, I, I really recommend, I find that synthetic brushes work the best for me. So I'm just going to start a darker base here. And I've got, you know, just this dark bluey green with a little bit of red back here. Any dark color that you want. Please don't use black. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to take a bit of water with that as well. Load my brush up. Make sure it's nice and flat. And I think I'll start having uh, some waterfalls right here. But I need a little bit more water on my brush. So I kind of just line it up and then slightly pull over and drop. A little bit more water, reload the brush. And we'll have it coming down here. Again, I'm doing this sparingly because I really want to have that pretty purple back there. Now, the next color I'm going to be adding is white. Now, I've got uh, titanium white. You can use any white you want. It's really personal choice. I like titanium white. It's the brightest and it gets the job done and I can always tint it to um, change the temperature because this is a very cool temperature of white. So I could take a little bit of yellow ochre and make it more of a, a creamy color. And I haven't washed my brush out yet so you're seeing a little bit of that first layer waterfall color showing through. I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush here and we're going to go and drop right over top, less pressure, very light. And then maybe make that one a little bit wider. The scene when we pulled and flicked and dragged the paint and made it a little bit blurry here, it really does create a mood and a feeling. And where we have the foliage, we can kind of just pull in some waterfalls in there too. It would be kind of pretty too right here to create either some palm leaves um, and some daisies or both. I think I'm going to do both. Um, I think that would look really pretty and it also shows you guys how to paint both of them so you're learning more and you can decide what you want to add in yours. So I'm going to use a filbert brush. I've got this one here. It is a number 16 and I'm going to take some water Get it a little wet first, and we can start with our, our palm leaves. So I'm just going to push into that bright uh, olive green, and I'm going to go out like this, create an art shape off of the, the grass that we already have there, load my brush up, and I'm loading it up, see, right on the tip, and I kind of push and fan it out like that, so I have quite a bit to work with. So I'm gonna pull, leave a space. Now I'm gonna add a bit more depth by pulling in a little bit of that um, phthalo blue. Because I'm painting these quite big, I could have gotten away with using my large filbert brush but if you guys and i know a lot of you guys don't have those large filbert brushes um, by the way i do giveaways on those there's only one store i've ever seen them at and i've looked online everywhere for them it's a little secret store um, where i go to to get them they're awesome brushes so if you want to be part of giveaways or contests and lots of other stuff uh, I'll leave a link below for that. So I'm going to overlap here. Sometimes I'm using a little bit more of 
the yellow ochre. So I'm pulling in both. I've got quite a bit to work with here. And this time I'm gonna make it look like this palm leaf is front facing. So we're seeing both sides of it, whereas we're just seeing the side of that one. And then right here in the middle, we'll add a little, little line. So we can add a little bit like that. Let's do one more. Um, let's see. We'll have it going this way. A little bit more. Add a little highlight on there. And once this dries, I can add some more layers either highlights or shadows or both. But now I'm gonna show you guys how to paint some daisies. So let's take some white. We'll make some off-white, cool white with that phthalo, a little bit of that crimson and green in there. and push, pushing and tapping. And where else can we have some? I don't wanna to cover too much of that up. Maybe we can have a little one right in here. So I like to paint them um, from on an angle like this. I think they look pretty like that and they're a lot of fun. I'll just take a little bit of blue in here and just tap in the center of it. Same with here, kind of half a circle. And we can have other colors. We can change the temperature up and add a little bit of yellow ochre in there with our blue. I don't know if you want to do front facing one. So it's just lots of little pulls and taps. And I love, I don't know if you guys can see this, the purple underneath is still a little bit wet, so I'm picking up a little bit of that and it's pulling and smearing into the other colors. So we're creating some different tones in there. And we can add a little bit of yellow ochre over top of a bit of that blue. Adding the blue first adds a little bit more uh, depth. Now I'm gonna hop over to this side with my flat brush. Before I dry this off, I'm gonna add a little bit more um, green over top of the red here just to break this up. This is gonna dry darker than what you're seeing here. Uh, acrylic paint just does. So don't be discouraged or surprised if that happens. It's just a thing. It's just what acrylic does. Um, if you don't want that to happen, then obviously use lighter colors to begin or add a little bit more white. So again, just tapping, sometimes pulling and flicking, just a very loose, messy type of foliage in the background. We're not seeing anything close up. We're just seeing shapes and blurs and blobs of color. Now, 
if you wanted to, and this is just, you know, I'm intuitive right now where I'm not looking at a picture. I am just making this up as I go along. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that green, a little bit of water and white, maybe. In the distance we've got, and look at how pretty that blue looks. That light, it's like an icy, frosty blue. Oh, I love that. And if I were following a picture and had a reference photo, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be using my uh, imagination the way I am and discovering uh, these fun little surprises during the process of painting. So I like to encourage you guys to do that. You're going to learn more. You're going to become more of the authentic painter that you're meant to be when you don't rely on reference photos. And of course, if you're wanting to paint what I'm painting here, this is a reference for you, which is totally fine. But um, for your homework, giving you guys some homework, and I want that to be uh, that you try an intuitive painting. So don't have anything in mind. Don't look at a reference photo. Pick some colors you like, size canvas, some brushes, play around, uh, being abstract first and then start to slowly turn it into a landscape or whatever uh, it ends up being. And trust me, you guys are gonna learn a lot more and you're gonna be in a state of mind that's very calming and relaxing. It's very, very good for your health. I'm gonna add a little bit of this icy blue over here. We've got a little pool right here. A little bit of something right there. A little bit of that green from my palm leaf got pulled into there, but it works because we've got all those other colors that would be reflecting. So again, just that icy blue that I made that I added over there, pulling and flicking across. And then I turn my brush like this with a handle pointing straight up and pull, making it slightly wider at the bottom. We're ready to come in with our layer, our filter, light mist or fog over this. What it's gonna do is really set this back further. It's gonna create more mood in this painting. And I'm gonna be using another filbert brush. This one's a number 30, if you're curious. I'm gonna get it a little bit wet, and I'm gonna take some of my white. And even if my white blends in with a little bit of these other colors, that's okay. It doesn't have to be straight white. Depending on how much white you use, what um, temperature your white is, warm or cool, it will slightly alter um, the feeling. But it will look pretty no matter what, as long as you're creating this light uh, mist over here. So it's about making it transparent. So that's why it's important to have a little bit of water in there. You don't want it to be dripping. So I'm going to start right over here. I also don't want to overwork any area too much. Um, just in case I accidentally pick up some of the other colors underneath. So see how pretty and soft that looks already? not dripping. So you can see I'm going right over that yellow to soften that as well.
I'm gonna add a little bit of it over on this side too. Not over all of it though. I'm gonna leave some areas a little bit darker or just as is. I'm picking up a little bit of paint. It's not completely dry, uh, but it's all right. It's just making some prettier shades in here, some pastel paint. I just didn't want to um, uh, interrupt any of the colors that we have here. So that's why it's more important to make sure that this is 100% dry before adding the layer of white over. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this so far, and I think I'm ready to start coming in with the lady. So we're gonna keep this really loose, guys, and I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. Don't be afraid, I'm here to help you get through this one step at a time. You can replay this video over and over, stop and pause uh, at any time. Trust me, you guys, you've got this, you can do this. And if you need any help at all, leave a comment, question below. You've got all my support. I'm here cheering you guys on. You're gonna be so happy that you pushed forward and kept going despite being a little bit scared, if you are. Okay, so for the next steps for this lady, her skin tone, I'm gonna to use a combination of yellow ochre, scarlet red. For cooler tones and shadows, light blue violet. And I'm going to be using, believe it or not, a little bit of Mars Black. I may add a few other colors along the way. I will be adding some white as well for the brightest parts of her dress and highlights. And I'm going to repeat this again for the third time. If you're just tuning in now, I have a full list. Just check out below this video, a full list of all the colors and brushes, size canvas we're using today. Um, if you need to go through all, all those colors, they're all there for you. Okay, guys, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna with the black. So we give her more of a, a deep chestnut highlight to her hair. So it's not just all one color, right? Okay, I'm going to start with her shoulders and I'm going to take a bit of white, yellow ochre, a little bit of red. I will just make a peachy tone here. Yours could be lighter or darker. Doesn't have to be this exact color. And so it's kind of on an angle. We know her, her head is going to be from about here to here, but her hair is going to be falling down there. And we're going to have a shoulder right about here. So like a half circle but then kind of pull slightly over. And we're gonna cover up her dress, but let's just say, because we need to know where her arm's going. We'll pull an arm right here. And like I said, we're gonna cover it up with the ruffles on her dress. Have uh, her elbow right about there. So, Slightly, it's not straight down, right? Slight angle, elbow, and another little angle. Now her dress is gonna be in and around here. I'm not gonna work on her hand, but just so you know, that's where her hand is. And then, unfortunately, I'm gonna be covering up some of those waterfalls. That's how She's kind of slanted off here and she's got another shoulder right there. So we'll just add a little dab. It's gonna be covered up with hair. And then pick up some more. Add a little blue this time, because it's more in shadow. Right there. She's gonna have some ruffles. So I'll just kind of scumble, wiggle, little wiggles to make it roughly looking. And then her arm. It's going to be narrower. 
Use a bit of that blue. And we're not going to see a lot of her arm, but I can definitely come over top here and add a little bit more of a ruffle illusion, but it's pretty blurry. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow on the inside of her arm. And then right in here, I'm going to take blue, a little bit of red. I could make a purple. And I'm going to do this very loosely. Isn't that a pretty color? This will be such a nice backdrop for um, the dress and her hair. Like I said, this is just going to peek through a little bit because her hair is really coming down and flowing down. So we can add a little bit more blue right in there. And add the ruffles over here. So we'll bring this out a little bit. So a little rectangle here, and then add a bit of white with a little bit of that purple in there. And just by doing that little top brush stroke, it's like flower petals, but you can do it in layers so that it looks like ruffles. Okay, now we're just going to scumble in this area here. And I'm going to switch over to a larger brush now. I'm going to go back over to my number 30. And I'm going to start it in a light blue. So we've already got our light blue by that, but I'm lifting it up a few shades by mixing some white in there. And now for the fun part. I love painting the big ball gowns. So we're going to go, her waist is narrow right here, right? And then it goes out. Gets really poofy. But we're going to make this loose. And we're working on the highlighted folds, right? So this is where it comes out. And then when it goes, the fold is in here. It's going to be darker. So we've got a natural shadow underneath. Use just a little bit of water. And then you can create some scoops if you want. Accidentally picked up a little bit of black in there. That's okay. We can fix that. I'm going to work some of this paint out of my brush and add some water. And do a thin, transparent film. Okay, just like what we what we did over here. So thin the paint with some water. And go ahead and start adding a little bit of yellow ochre in here as well to the white. And we'll come in with our next layer. So lines, all these little lines are going to create or help to create the folds in her dress. I 
and I've got a lot of videos of ladies in gowns, dancing, pretty dresses, very feminine. So if you want a little bit more inspiration or want to see more like this, uh, check out the playlist below and links. I've got a portrait and figure playlist, lots to see on there, fairies, angels, witches, fantasy, lots of stuff. See all the stumbling with thin layers of paint? It's gonna give you that very pretty tool illusion. And it's always gonna dry a bit darker than this as well. I think it would be fun to give her a bow. We could add a big bow right here. One of the pictures I'm looking at for reference, or a few of them actually, have a big bow there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use a little flat brush for this so I can get more of a pointy bow look. And I'm gonna take that yellow ochre and white with my little flat brush. This one is, I'm sure it's a number four, number four to six. It's off of my worn off of the brush now so I'm going to come right up here and we'll just do a simple pointy figure eight okay that's how you got to look at it break it down into shapes or a triangle and a triangle or it kind of looks like a sideways hourglass too Some of that blue and we can go inside here and add some shadows or even a little bit of black and then black like this a little bit darker right in here. So a little triangle of that darker color. And then we'll go around. There's gonna be that little knot in the middle, right? But everything is sort of crinkly and ripply looking that we're not gonna see a perfect little circle knot here. We're just going to see, we're just breaking it down into patches and lines of color. I'm going to use a little bit of this darker bluey gray color I made and add it in here as well. Well, I've got it for some cool shadows, especially where it's gathered. It's going to be gathered here with her hand or she's gathering it, I should say. And I'm just gonna reload my white. Okay, back over to my white. A little bit of yellow ochre, make it more of a, a warm temperature and I'll come in from the side like this and then another little line right there and then up push into a point and we'll add a few little dabs I'm going to make this part look a little roundish, so I'm not pulling straight across, but I'm pulling in an arch. So 
And then I'll do a very thin, very, very thin outline right here. Got a hint of that blue in there. more here to the ruffles. So just little scallops, a little bit of white and blue, a little bit more white, make that show up better. And you can do little dabs inside too if you want to have more of a lacy or illusion of a lacy look. And though this is probably going to be covered up with hair, oops, I need a little bit more white there. Could have a little bit in there as well. Back over to a little bit of crimson. Blue, yellow ochre, and white. Work on her skin color on this side just a little bit more. Oh, let's add a little bit more yellow ochre and white there. You don't want it to compete too much with uh, the background. And now I'm going to take some blue, a little bit of black, in with those colors on my brush, and we can add shadow here. On the outside of her arm. I think I want to do another um, layer of ruffles. So I'm going to go into that white again. Come down, scoop, scoop, scoop. A little bit of blue in there. A little bit more white now. I might have to wait for that to dry a little bit. I'm just going to make her bow come up a little bit higher here. Add a little bit more to her arm. Make sure it's not going to look see-through. her knuckles go across here it comes out a little bit wide like this and then her fingers kind of just fold down in here into um, into the folds and the material of her dress just that same skin color another layer so we'll rebrighten it add her hair now as this is uh, drying and then we can do the next layer or layers of her dress in just a minute. So like I said I was going to use black and burnt sienna. I think that's a really pretty deep rich dark brown color and I'm going to start right up here right off the top of the canvas. So 
So we've got some hair that goes in the front, down the front of her arm, and then we've got the rest falling down her back. over her arm, shoulder, so I'm going to use the end of my brush now, quite a bit of paint, and I'm going to make it look wavy-like, and I'm going to have to dry this off before I continue, otherwise I'm going to just keep picking up um the cream color of her bow and her dress okay so i dried it off a little bit and I'm just going to start to do little curls here. Got a little, maybe just a hint, a slightest hint of some highlights in here. So have fun with your guys, with yours, you guys, and use whatever colors that you want. of a little bit of hair coming down the front as well. There it is. I was looking for my rake fan brush because I'm going to try and use it in uh, this painting in her dress. I love to use this brush wherever I can. Okay, so I'm just going to take water with my off-white here. And you can really use any white that you want. I'm just going to start creating little scoops, following some of those scoops that are already there. Letting those be a guide. So we've got to do the material that she's holding here. So just an indication of that. A bit of water on my brush. So yeah, it's kind of bunched up right here. crimson, a bit of white, get a gorgeous lilac -y color. I like using this brush because I can get that really pretty sweepy layered effect. Okay, 
and washing that color out or those colors i'm going to go over the same brush a bit of water my black burnt sienna hair color and i can create another layer of curls here it's a great it's a fantastic brush for hair I just put out, I've been putting out some uh, lion and owl tutorials where I'm using this brush a lot and demonstrating the simplest way to create fur. This is a must have brush, it's just awesome. I'm going to go back over to my flat brush. I'll go back into a little bit more white with those same colors that you see here, crimson, yellow ochre. And I'm going to play up on the folds and the highlights. Make her bow come out just a little bit bigger here and round it out. So scoop, round. Bit of water. Purpley color I made. A little bit more red in it in that area. You can use any uh, pastel colors that you want for your dress. Lots of lines and swoops and scoops to create that movement for a big dress and remember that you're not out to make it look uh, hyper realistic and well if you are and then this isn't the right tutorial for you but more than anything when you get some movement and some pretty patterns and the right colors light and shadow in a painting that's all you need to create feeling and a successful painting and I'll add a little bit more see how I have it on the side brush push wiggle 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 and you'll create all those natural looking curls And I'm just going to add a few more flowers before I call this painting all done. So I've got some olive green, some white in here. I can add, uh, before I add some flowers, I can add some uh, brighter highlights. I'm just using a flat brush this time, so you really can use uh, almost any brush for this. The rake fan would work too. Of course, I used uh, Filbert before Filbert's work, but if you guys, if you guys are ever like stumped on what brush to use because you don't have what I'm using, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below for an alternative. I'm happy to help you out. Take 
like a little bit of that olive and black. a little bit of white, mix it with whatever's on my brush here. I can add some little flowers here and there. Just take a little bit more of that white, add a little bit of a little ochre, maybe a little bit of Crimson. And you can add some highlights to your existing ones as well. So just push. So again, flat brush, filbert brush. A round brush. It just it's all about the brush stroke. And some brushes, it's for some techniques you have to use. A certain brush um, but you can get away with different brushes for creating um, different things in your paintings and I'm just gonna tap 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 here This has definitely been really fun painting to work on. I'm so glad I decided to hit record on my phone and um, record this for you guys. And so I'm able to share it with you. If you guys liked this painting and uh, want to paint along, feel free. I can't wait to see your versions of this. And you're welcome to share this video with your friends and your painting groups. gonna even out her arm here smooth this out just for the fun of it let's see if we can get a neat scalloped look by using the rake, oh yeah, that works great. So watch, I'm holding it, scoop, tight scoops. Reload your brush, so you're not having to push too hard. Just gonna add some shadows for little lines here or where her fingers might be. And I got a little shadow right in here.
So I'm just going to add a little bit of that uh, skin color and more on the white side just to soften the shadows of her fingers in with her hand and her wrist. And then I'll call this painting all done. So this painting is all done and you know I really enjoyed creating this tutorial for you guys. I have to admit I wasn't even going to hit record on my camera at first but last minute I decided to and I'm so glad I did. I love sharing my painting and my process with you guys and most of all I love teaching you guys and inspiring you. So if you're feeling a bit blue today and you happen to stumble upon this video I hope it cheered you up a little bit and brought some comfort to you in any way uh, or that you learned something new that you can take along uh, in your art journey. Um, don't forget to leave a comment below this video letting me know what you liked about it, what you'd like to learn in the future, if you need some alternatives for the colors I've used today and maybe you don't have those ones. Uh, I've got lots of ideas for you for alternatives that you can use so you don't have to miss out and you can still paint along with us. Be sure to share your versions of my painting tutorials up on our Facebook group. I'll leave a link down below uh, the video for that. And I want to wish you guys happy painting. Have a wonderful day. Stay positive. And I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye!